A very good morning to you and welcome to St. Peter's in Swetnam. Every year throughout the globe, people celebrate the Feast of St. Peter at this time of year. And so particularly we celebrate it here in a church dedicated to him. St. Peter was of course known as the rock, given that name Petrus, the rock on which the church would be built. And following him, we become living stones, those who are part of Christ's church in our lives. And of course, it is us and those who've gone before us, Peter and his successors, us and our forebears. And I thought we'd start here this morning at the grave of our sister Hilda Bailey. We buried her here on Thursday of this week, surrounded by as many people as we could safely gather here, but surrounded by love and thankfulness for the life that she had lived among us in this place and the worship she'd given in this church. And so here we remember those who are part of that living faith, those who have been living stones with Christ. Not just Hilda, of course, but all those who are forebears, whose remains are here. We are but players in a history that goes from one to another and we live our lives and pass on our faith in the good news of Christ here, for example, Samuel and Sarah Bailey and their son William, relatives of Hilda. There's more over there behind and numerous families of which so many of you will have relations here. Well, this place has been special for centuries to people. And let's just pause as we begin to hear a little from those for who this place is special today. Hi everyone, I think I am extremely lucky to live in the parish of Swetnam. It is great to open the curtains in the morning, the weather is sunny and in the fields outside you can see birds, pheasants, rabbits, the odd hare, also cows and horses. The scenery is always changing. I was born in Swetnam, went to Swetnam school worked all my life in the family business and brought up my lovely family also in Swetnam. I was church warden here at St Peter's for 20 years. Church life and social functions are very special to me and my family. I love going to church not only on special days like Easter, Harvest and Christmas etc. I walk, to walk into St. Peter's Church is lovely. It is a super little church. It always feels so calm, peaceful and welcoming. I think the social church functions are very important. To be able to see friends and neighbours, have a chat and have some fun with them. Swetnam is my little piece of heaven. I am so lucky to live where we do, to have a great family and friends and neighbours all around us. My wife and I call it Sunny Swetnam, but don't tell anyone, that's our secret. Well, as I became a doctor in 1949 about welding in the church, I seemed to have interest in the church then, when I started, and then the message got talking to Michael Baker's grandmother, and I said, I used to think about the son of school. I said, we better have him in the choir then and all. <laughs> so I got it. <laughs> we are the fourth generation of Andos who are farmed at Hull Farm, but our family links with Swetnam go back more than 122 years to 1898. My granddad went to the village school and church, and my dad and all of us went to Martin Church of England primary school. Martin school was built when all of the seven parish schools shut 
Martin is very proud of its history and still has a very strong link with each parish church. Harvest and the plough service are very important in the farming calendar. You can have the best fertile soils and strongest seed, but you have to have the correct weather to make every crop grow. God never fails us. Church has been wonderful for me here in Swettenham because when I was new to the village, I didn't know anybody at all, but it's lovely to be able to go into church and know that whatever you may not have in common with everyone else, what you do have in common is your faith. And it's a re been a really warm welcome to come to the church. So with all God's people, let's begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we begin our worship, let's just take a moment to be still, to be thankful for God's presence with us and to allow that to rise up within us. And as we do so, we're aware of the things that draw us away from Christ's love and his peace, from God's goodness within us. So we take a moment to acknowledge those, to seek God's forgiveness and renewal. And so we say, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect prayer for this feast of St. Peter. Let us pray. Almighty God, who inspired your apostle, St. Peter, to confess Jesus as Christ and Son of the living God. Build up your church upon this rock, that in unity and peace it may proclaim one truth and follow one Lord, your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And I'll hand you just over there to Howard. This weekend, we celebrate Peter Tide, which of course has added significance for us here in Swetnam, as our church is dedicated to the apostle St. Peter. St. Peter is often referred to as having the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And in our reading today from verse 19, we see where that particular idea comes from. But, is he really the key holder? Or do we, as members of the body of Christ, actually hold the keys? The reading is taken from Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Jesus went to the territory near the town of Caesarea Philippi, where he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They answered. Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others say Jeremiah or some other prophet. What about you? Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Good for you, Simon, son of John, for this truth did not come to you from any human being but it was given to you directly by my Father in heaven. And so I tell you, Peter, you are a rock, and on this rock foundation I will build my church, and not even death will ever be able to overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What you prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven, and what you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then Jesus ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Well, the gospel this morning in many ways does seem to suggest Peter is the chosen apostle, the person Christ is commissioning to, as his successor. At first glance, these verses seem like a simple passage about 
Who is Jesus and the passing on of the mantle of authority? Maybe even hinting to Peter and the other apostles that the new covenant will require a leadership structure. After all, does Christ not tell us that Peter is the rock? And on this rock, I will build my church. And the church? Well, isn't that the institution, the structure that we require to be witnesses to Christ? Many people, both of faith and of no faith, do read this passage as Christ commissioning the concept of what we today call the Christian church. Yet is it as simple as that? And what is really meant by referring to Peter as my rock? The reality is that Jesus is laying down some ground rules. He is talking about leadership. He is talking about how the future church will develop, how the new covenant will be different from the old. It was common for rabbis and priests of the Jewish faith at that time to refer to Abraham not only as the father of the nation, but as the rock, the rock that the nation was built upon. The Bible itself alludes to the Lord God as the rock to which humanity itself is nothing more than the grains of dust. Here are just some of the references. He is the rock, his word is perfect. From the Deuteronomy chapter 32. There is no rock like our God. From 1 Samuel chapter 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. From Psalm 18. I think that when Jesus refers to Peter as the rock, he is basically saying, you, Peter, are the first stone from the rock that is Christ, the foundation stone of the new covenant. Peter himself may have left us a clue. In chapter 2 of his first epistle, Peter says, Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. St. Peter is indeed the foundation stone of the new covenant, a church that is open to everyone, regardless of race, color, creed, or for that matter, gender or personal orientation. That, starting with St. Peter and his fellow apostles, and going on through the ages, all who come to Christ are living stones. That means you and I. Whatever our position in life, whatever our role in the church, we are all living stones hewn out of the rock of Christ. Humanity needs order and a degree of structure if it is to achieve. Therefore, we need our churches as institutions to help bind us to Christ, to guide us in faith. Something that in lockdown, I feel, has really shown great adaptability and leadership in what has been a strange and unprecedented time. Yet, as living stones... We as individuals are also the church of Christ. We are the key holders on earth. The danger for us is that if we lose sight of Christ's love, then those keys can easily slip through our fingers. For it is, for it is us as individual stones that bind the churches as institutions together. As much as the institution that is the, the church helps binds us to God. The centuries move on, times change, yet the church, which is both the living stones, which is the people, and the cornerstone, which is Christ, will continue to prevail both here in Swetnam and the rural Daneside, and everywhere else 
this Peter tide, and always. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our beautiful and historic churches, which stand at the heart of our communities. They bring places of calm in a troubled world, as we are enveloped in the love of their embrace. Thank you for those who minister here and bless all those who worship here, feeling the comfort and strength of your love. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for giving us St. Peter, for like us, he had moments of great weakness and made terrible mistakes. But he also set us a wonderful example by recognizing his mistakes and trying again until he got it right. Please, Lord, give us the strength to be like Peter and follow his example. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for giving strength and wisdom to the leaders of our church. Those who lead our worship, whether vicars, curates or readers, bring a chance to reflect on the world, our behaviours and how we may improve the way we live our lives. Help us to spread the spirit of community that we find in church, the acceptance of others' beliefs and willingness to tackle new challenges. Give us strength and guidance to follow the path that is right. We think particularly of those who are fighting against racial or religious injustice at this time. We remember those who have been and still remain isolated during this pandemic. Give them the strength to continue to hope for calmer days when they can visit church again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When Peter was called by Jesus, he instantly realised that something wonderful had come into his life. He threw aside his fishing nets and became the rock that Jesus knew he could rely upon to spread the good news after he had gone. Please God, give us the ability to recognize, like Peter, what is good and pure and acceptable in your sight, and to use that knowledge in our everyday life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ, the cornerstone, is our peace. As living stones, he binds us together into the community of his love, the church, and for the building of his kingdom. So the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh 
As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Peter and of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. The body of Christ. Amen.
the blood of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Prayer of Spiritual Communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart, O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother. May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Lord God, the source of all truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Keep us in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And we pray for God's blessing upon us. So may God, who appointed Peter to be that stone upon which the church was built, and who has appointed us to be living stones, part of his building of the church and the kingdom in the world. May we know our footsteps following his in the way of love, of peace, of hope. And so the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Next week, we will be in some of our churches at least. There are notices coming out about which churches and when, but basically we're going to be able through July and August to have at least two services in each parish church per month. So every other Sunday in your parish church. Because of the limits of space, please do restrict yourself to your parish church only and only come if you feel safe. There will be instructions about the precautions that we're taking. And for those of you who are shielding, we're setting Hugh Moorfield aside as a shielding church just for those of you who are otherwise not having contact with people outside. So there'll be plenty of space there and others with very, very low risk that they might be carrying anything you might catch. And that includes those who will be ministering as well. We'll be doing that as it's needed through July and August. And come September, we may even be back to our normal patterns. Let's see. And as for our online services and what we'll have available here, well, I'll work that out in the week between now and next Sunday. But for now, I hope you can join us, some of you on Zoom afterwards. Have a blessed day, and I'll hand over to Howard for the words of dismissal. So, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.